Welcome to The Herbal Ire, your podcast on all things holistic health, medical astrology, spirituality, herbalism, and so much more. Presented by your host, Ayer Atla, medical astrologist, herbalist, and naturopath. Let's dive right into today's topic, love and light. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Herbal Ire. I'm your host, Ayer Atla. And today we are going to continue the Medical Astrology 101 series with continuing into Cancer. I am so excited that you all joined me today. So it is Cancer season um, when I'm recording this. So that's great uh, timing, (laughs) I think. And it's actually a really great season and time to be uh, doing this. So I am super excited to go over this today with you. So, let's get started, shall we? Okay. Alrighty, so today, like I said, we'll be talking all about cancer. This sign is home to... Um, my husband's rising sign, it's several of my friends' sun signs, so I just really feel its influences on a pretty much, like, daily basis in my life, and I absolutely love it. I also feel it has a really close association to the moon, since the moon rules it, and I just really feel that association a lot with the fact that I have so much water in my chart, and I'm closely, you know, associated with the moon and how my body works and I feel it a lot with my husband's rising sign being cancer too um so it's just (laughs) as an individual with like a fuck ton of water in my chart the moon and I are besties right because it really does influence my uh my emotions my how my body responds to things like yeah the moon and I are uh really uh really close so this sign is actually one of like the most amazing signs of the zodiac and i really can't wait to like dive in so let's just go so obviously um we're doing cancer the glyph for cancer looks kind of like two waves that are crashing over each other so one is um it goes a straight line like a curved line from the right to the left and then loops under and then the other one goes from the left to the right and loops over and so they look like two waves that are kind of crashing over top of each other and that is obviously like kind of a perfect sign given that this sign is a water sign um cancer is represented by the crab when we speak about like what it's associated with so the uh association with cancer is the crab um The crab is an animal that has like a really tough outer shell for armor and protection, but the inside's kind of like soft and susceptible to injury, right? It's kind of squishy. And that's the same as our native cancer individuals since the sun, moon, are rising. Many are really good at putting up a tough exterior, but on the inside, they're like the soft, squishy teddy bears that will in turn ferociously defend their loved ones if they feel like anybody is getting you know, out of hand or harming their family. They are ferocious protectors, you know, like the crab with its pinchers, right? But they're really good at not letting anybody see that side of them unless you get really close to them and they feel comfortable with you. Um, If they don't feel comfortable, you're going to get that tough outer shell, right? But if they feel comfortable, you're going to see that vulnerable inside of them. And so that's uh, very much... uh, the crab is a great uh, depiction because of that, right? Um, the crab does eventually outgrow its shell from time to time, and it needs to grow or find a new one, depending on what type of crab that it is. And this is a part of cancer that is not always easy for them, but is kind of a requirement for them to continue growing and evolving as a person, right? Um, they like to find, they like their own way of doing things, their current shell is comfy, and they see absolutely no need to change it. So it can be really hard for um, for them to uh, really 
uh, you know, open up to people sometimes because of that. So this is really kind of a lesson that they need to learn, right? It's to learn how to evolve and change as needed. So that is really an important uh, important way for them to be um, important lesson for them to learn so cancer as i've already mentioned is a water sign this is the first time in the zodiac that we see a water sign but it's a repeat of the modes right so there's four elements three modes so we are on the fourth sign of the zodiac so we have repeated a mode we are um back to the cardinal sign so cancer is a cardinal water sign so this is the first water sign that we've come to in our journey through the zodiac but it's our second time seeing a cardinal sign so if you remember cardinal signs are like the initiators right they initiate the beginning of a season the changing from one season to another and all the stuff that comes with that so cancer is the start of summer right it starts at the summer solstice or litha midsummer whatever you call it and it brings about the transition from spring to summer it's a cardinal sign so we do find cancer natives really wanting to enact change and lead the way but due to the nature of water they don't go charging straight in like aries would right aries is a fire sign fire is you know a very strong presence it can be when a fire starts and it's out of control most people aren't going to go charging toward a fire right because its presence is overwhelming and dangerous and it definitely will lead the charge if you don't uh, put some water in its way to uh, slow it down or put it out altogether so cardinal water though behaves a little different in the fact that it doesn't do that charging straight in, right? They tend to enact change slowly and steadily, and they move through decisions in a meandering way. I would never expect a, can a native cancer to come to a decision quickly. They just, they don't. They give, you need to give them time to mull over something before demanding an answer. They will come to one. It'll just take like a minute or 50. <laughs> um, my husband, like I said, is a native cancer rising, and whoo, let me tell you, yeah, he he definitely needs time to come to a decision you cannot rush him if you try to rush him then it just won't happen you know you just won't uh you won't get an answer then because if he has to make a decision quickly then he just won't and because he feels pressured and they don't like feeling pressured they will definitely get there on their own they will find the way through like a river does right if you ever seen like a flash flood that water will get to where it wants to go and it'll find the past path of least resistance to do that right so that's when it'll overflow it'll find some other way to get to where it wants to go and that's definitely like what a cancer is in their like way of initiating things they will find the path of least resistance to get to their goal and they will take that way unlike aries who doesn't care if it's the path of least resistance or what's in their way they will just charge straight through and knock anything out of their way that they feel doesn't need to be there any longer right for them to go whereas cancer will be like oh look there's there's this obstacle in the way oh, I don't want to deal with that and they'll zigzag and go around it so they will still get there they'll lead the way they do tend to be good leaders but they're like the compassionate leaders who take everybody else's opinions and into uh, you know into consideration before they make a decision um, as I mentioned earlier cancer is ruled by the moon and we can see that association in cancer natives very well there's two type of cancer natives right two types there's like the new moon type these tend to be like tall slender people who uh, maybe don't have very full figures which is nothing wrong with that and i don't mean this in a bad way but they definitely are very tall and slender just individuals they um if they work out they tend to build muscle but they're never going to gain like a bunch of curves from that then there's the full moon type that are you know the exact opposite of that they are tend to be a little bit shorter they tend to be a little more um, on the heavier side with their weight they tend to carry it a lot in like their hips and their butt they tend to carry most of their weight like down there instead of uh, 
anywhere else in their body and they just tend to be really jolly individuals <laughs> they're very happy all the time whereas the new moon types tend to be a little more serious and a little more like introverted and uh, just really contemplative all the time the full moon types tend to be more extroverted they're the ones who have all the friends they're all up in everybody's business they know all their neighbors that kind of stuff so there is the two different types of light cancer natives um so depending on if you are a cancer native or you know one in your life you can you know surmise which one they might lean more toward um if they are a full moon type, they tend to hold on to water a lot better um, than the new moon types. And so these can be ones that tend to struggle with a lot of like edema, swelling in the lower extremities, um, painful breast when a full moon is present, especially as it causes swelling in their you know, in their breast and the fluid and the tissues there. And they tend to do that. Whereas the new moon types tend to struggle with dehydration because their body doesn't hold on to the water as well. So those are the two main types that we see here. Um, cancer natives tend to be very intuitive and they are not easy to fool. These are the kind of people that are really fucking hard to surprise with anything because they always know somehow that you are planning something before you probably even know that you're going to plan something. Like it's so hard to surprise my husband and my cancer native friends because they just always have some sort of like sixth sense that knows that I'm attempting to, you know, plan a surprise for them. <laughs> so these people tend to like surprises, but they're hard to surprise. And so they find that they don't, experience surprises as much as they would probably like to because they're so hard to surprise the moon in astrology and medical astrology is the distributor of the sun's life force and the vitality right so cancer is ruled by the moon this is what moon what the moon does the moon governs the psyche the emotions the menstrual cycle the stomach the mammary glands which produce lack you know the milk lactation for um feeding children, meninges of the brain, the left eye for the males and the right eye for the females. And it rules the lungs to an extent. It rules more the fluid um, in the lungs, whereas mercury rules the like air of the lungs. So they are, it's a co-ruler of that. Cancer, in turn, then rules the stomach, the breast, it co-rules the female reproductive system with Scorpio, and to a lesser extent, the male reproductive system, though we more associate the male reproductive system with Mars. Um, the mucosal membranes in the lower part of the lungs are also ruled by cancer. And we can definitely see the association with the mucosal membranes in cancer because I find a lot of cancer natives when they get dehydrated the first sign that they are dehydrated is they start having stomach issues lots of pain lots of indigestion acid reflux because that mucosal membrane is drying up and as it loses its like elasticity and its moistness the acid in your stomach affects it more and causes a lot of pain so you can definitely uh, see that um, cancer natives who are dehydrated will also experience a lot of like cracking in their hips and knees and their joints um, because as they get too dehydrated the mucosal membranes and the synovial fluid starts like drying up a little bit so it's very imperative um, with cancer that they do make sure they're hydrated but they have to be a little careful with their hydration because of their tendency especially if they're a full moon type to hold on to that water a little too much and then go the opposite direction where now they're having swelling in their extremities from having too much fluid and nowhere for it to go so we'll talk more about how to control that here later in the episode so cancer uh also rules like i said the lower part of the lung so it rules the lower lobes while gemini officially only technically rules the upper lobes but i find that gemini can also affect the lower lobes as well depending on what's going on in those in the lungs it can help me pinpoint which sign is actually the one that's more afflicted and it also cancer also rules the emotional waters of the heart Whereas Leo rules the heart in general, which we'll talk about in the next episode when we get to Leo, but 
if you're talking about the emotional part of the, like the emotional waters, the emotional feeling of the heart, that is actually ruled by cancer. Cancer rules the fourth house on the wheel of the zodiac. This house is concerned with family, motherhood, the home, and your roots. Be these like emotional or physical roots. So like your physical roots to the earth, your physical roots to other people, um, your emotional roots to other people or a certain place, things like that. Um, in a way, it kind of also rules a little bit of your identity and how you identify within your family structure. Um, all of my Scorpio placements are in the fourth house. So um, you will find this out when we cover Scorpio, but Scorpio rules changes in your life, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually. So because of all of my Scorpio placements being in my fourth house, like 99% of my life lessons revolve around like my mother, my family, and things affecting my home life. So Yay, that's so much fun. Um, and we will talk more about that when we get to Scorpio. But I just wanted to point that out, that if you have a, a placement of a certain planet or a certain sign in um, the fourth house, depending on which sign it is, you might notice that a lot of the things that affect your life come from that fourth house of like family, right? In your identity through a family structure. Um, this sign, due to its association with the fourth house, is a very nurturing sign. Its keyword here is like, I feel. And oh boy, do cancer natives feel. Whew. They feel everything. And they feel it on a very deep emotional and psychic level. And this causes them to be very good at helping others with their deepest needs and just like intuitively knowing what someone needs in the moment. So they're very empathetic. But... They tend to take care of others and forget about themselves. We deem them as like one of the mothers of the Zodiac. We talked about how Taurus is kind of, you know, one of the other very motherly signs. And I mean that in the way of um, not necessarily like male or female, but just that like nurturing that you see uh, with certain individuals, right? Where they just, they're like what we call in nursing the mothers of the unit. They're the ones who, no matter what gender they are, right? They show up with food for everybody when they know it's gonna be a particularly rough shift. They're the one who will make sure they watch your patients and tell you to go eat lunch and they'll make sure they take care of you. If you have a problem, you know you can go to them and cry on their shoulder and they'll just give you like the best life advice ever while making you feel better without hardly even saying anything, right? They're just those nurturing people. They're like the mother of uh, your life without actually being maybe your biological mother so they're very nurturing they take care of people in a very like positive way they are really good listeners and they're very good at helping you like figure out what you need to do if you have a problem in any way shape or form but they tend to ignore or taking care of themselves in favor of helping others like reach their goals and um, become the people they know they can become and really help nurture them down their paths of life while forgetting about themselves. So your opposite sign, right? The polar sign of cancer is Capricorn and Capricorn is all about boundaries, which we'll talk about when we get to Capricorn. But I just want to mention that, right? Capricorn is all about boundaries and establishing boundaries in your personal life, establishing boundaries in your emotional and physical side, and just making sure that you take care of you and put yourself first in situations where it requires that instead of always being like, you know, uh, throwing yourself under the bus or making yourself a martyr for something that you really don't need to be. And so, Cancers really need to remember that opposite sign and uh, lean into it sometimes and set those boundaries. That's something that I notice many uh, cancer natives do struggle with is setting boundaries in their life that protect them and others in their lives and really help them not feel like they're being taken advantage of all the time and people are always taking, taking, taking and never giving back to them. Um, so in its high expression or its high evolution, cancer, as we mentioned, is like a very nurturing mother type figure. And I say mother with quotes around it. They embody empathy. They not only hear what you're saying, but they feel it. Like just 
really deeply in their body. There's a kindness and a desire to help others. It's very strong. They have a hard time ignoring it. Many native cancers who are in their high expression tend to work in like the healthcare field or in some manner of like doing something where they can actually enact change and help others. Um, there is a kindness here and a desire to help others. They wear their heart on their sleeve sometimes, but they're also all, also quick to like lend a hand or a listening ear or words of wisdom when someone needs it. They have a rich inner life due to their like very highly receptive nature. And this is because their imagination like wanders freely and they have a great inner vis visualization system. These are the individuals that like when they think of something they can literally like picture it in their mind like see it as an actual picture and evolve that into whatever it is that they want they have great imaginations and due to this they tend to be very artistic and creative individuals that are very visual in how they learn and how they perceive the world and so they tend to in their high expression especially put out art in a way that they use that visual creativity and that ability to see things on a level that maybe others can't and help open others minds and, and their imaginations to what is really being seen like out in this world and on a different like plane almost of existence um, and it's low expression <laughs> and low evolution the positive traits we just mentioned also really turn into cancer's shadow side right so their ability to feel so much and always be giving to others can turn them into like shy timid people that disconnect from the outer world and retreat inside themselves and they start living more in their heads and less with their hearts they become kind of uh cynical and closed off and they only see the negative in the world instead of the positive when somebody confronts them they turn into like highly emotional erratic people that are very irrational which is understandable because they retreated into that like instinctual realm and that realm doesn't have any rationalization to it right instinct is just that it's instinct there's no logicking with it there's no rationalizing with it it's just it is what it is and so when they're in their low expression they can tend to rely more on those instincts and those instincts can in turn turn them potentially into highly emotional erratic people this can then in turn kind of lead them to be like that overbearing mother complex again in quotes showing up where they turn every relationship into them becoming like the therapist and attempting to solve everyone's problems and literally like forcing advice down people's throats like they hear people they're saying and then like attempt to force them to listen to their advice and follow their way and well you know if you'd only done it the way i said it then you know that wouldn't have happened to you they become very kind of know-it-all in their advice and they become lost in themselves because they try to fix everyone and then they don't actually ever fix anyone or themselves because people want to stay away from them because they're one of those people where no matter what you say they're not actually hearing you at that point right they're they're listening to respond instead of listening to understand stand and these are the people we see where like every relationship they have they're like well i know they have so much potential if only i can get to see that get them to see it right and they they spend the entire relationship trying to change the other person into who they can see them becoming instead of accepting them for who they are and just loving them where they are because if you do that right you love someone where they are at this exact moment in time and you love them flaws and all they will become that higher version that you see in your head that you know they can reach because you're not trying to change them. They want to change on their own because they they want to. They feel that desire to do so because they know they have your support, right? But they become very toxic in their low expression where they're trying to like force that on everybody. They attempt to change every toxic person they meet in turn they become toxic because cancers pick up on everybody's emotions and so they take on that emotions, those emotions of that toxic person that they're with. And they really like lose themselves in that other person and struggle to maintain their own identity. So we see a lot of people in 
those relationships that you you know who I'm talking about the ones that are over and over again in like some kind of bad toxic relationship where as soon as they start dating a new person they're suddenly into computer gaming because that's what this person's in but last week when they dated this other person they were really into motocross and then the time before that they were suddenly into cross stitching right and and you look into it those are all the things that that person that they're currently dating is into and they they lose themselves and don't have their own identities and what they like and they don't know who they are anymore another possible low expression that i see is they put up a hard outer shell and become overly protective and really kind of closed off to everything so this actually in turn kind of disables and turns off their ability to feel how others feel and shuts down their empathy and these people also tend to be very reactive but also explosive because they react from a place of the past instead of the present so they let their past experiences and what they've experienced like guide their every interaction they become highly distrusting and sometimes even paranoid so these are the ones that think everybody's out to get them everything you say is well why would you say that to me you know you think this right even though that's nothing that you said and they're very explosive they're hard to be around they're hard to be in a relationship with they're hard to just even try to be friends with um these are the kind of people that you know you just don't want to be around at all and so uh, you, this can be a possibility if you're in your low expression as a cancer native. And so just knowing this and learning this about yourself and knowing when you feel like you're going that way to do what you know you need to do to get out of that. Sometimes taking a break from people, taking a break from the world, go retreat into yourself for a little while to figure out really who you are and what you want. And then when you've done that come back out into the world and bring that version of yourself out there instead of letting everyone else's opinions of you and what they think you should do influence you to become somebody that you ultimately don't like and you don't want to be around yourself you know so that's definitely something that i see with cancer natives they need a lot of alone time many of them tend to be um, like extroverted introverts right when they're around people they know and trust and like they're very extroverted when they're not they're very introverted but they also just need a lot of alone time to recharge their batteries and that's okay some people need that um, common health problems that we see with cancer digestive issues because <laughs> it rules the stomach I see a lot of digestive issues and honestly I see a lot more of them stemming from emotional reasons such as like anxiety induced stomach aches than I do from actual like physiological reasons right they can tend toward eating disorders um, if they're a new moon type they tend toward like anorexia or bulimia where they are struggling with an eating disorder because they uh, feel that they are maybe you know body dysmorphia maybe you feel like you're overweight and you're not or you're you know you struggle with it I've had it myself I had anorexia for a long time and then I flipped into bulimia for a little while so I've been there and it's like it doesn't matter what anyone says or even like what pictures look like I just never saw in the mirror what everyone else was seeing and so that was me really struggling with like that new moon side right where um, new moon individuals that are more influenced by that tend to be under eaters whereas full moon people tend to have eating disorders of overeating so more like binge eating disorder instead so they can flip either way in these eating disorders um, edema which is like swelling like we mentioned earlier in typically extremities but edema can be anywhere in the body but you typically see it more like in the legs and the feet um, and the arms sometimes in the hands over anywhere else um, allergies oh my gosh my cancer natives have allergies to everything I see it more in cancer Sun and moons than I do in risings but like I mean environmental allergies medication allergies food allergies these are the people that um, struggle with a lot of allergies many times depression paranoia breast cysts and breast soreness um, lactation issues as well as fertility issues occasionally um, this is actually the most fertile sign of the zodiac but if there's an imbalance in their body anywhere it can flip it so that they tend toward infertility instead of fertility and this typically i've noticed comes when they do get dehydrated it's like it just dries everything up so that things aren't moving as they should and 
low motility of places in the body that work with the reproductive system leads to, you know, low uh, chance of pregnancy. So that is definitely one of the things that I also see, but I see more often uh, cancer natives are the ones that get pregnant at the drop of a hat, right? Like you look at them sideways and they're pregnant again and uh, you feel like they just had a baby and they have another baby <laughs> so it's uh they tend to be very very fertile usually um herbs that are governed by cancer that can be useful for any of the above health problems mugwort this is a very good um, well-rounded like what we call like female herb because it's really good for the female reproductive system this can help keep all of that like lubricated and happy and toned up and uh, make it so that if for, you know, getting pregnant is what you're wanting, then that will definitely ensure that, you know, your body is where it needs to be for that to happen. Um, marshmallow root is another good one. Marshmallow root is a very mucilaginous, which is basically just means that it has a lot of when you um, like it looks like goop. When you make it into a tea, it really gets a lot of like goopiness to it, right? It's very slippery. It gives a lot of um, lubrication to whatever you're using it for. So when you drink it, um, it works really well for people who are suffering from stomach issues that are caused by dehydration, right? It helps coat the stomach with that basically you like mucus type substance until your body is you know back to a balance where now it's producing its own and your dehydration has you know been resolved uh, milky oats is another good one milky oats is great for multiple things it's really good for anxiety and depression it's really good for helping nourish your brain and your nerves in your brain um, with how uh like moistening it is it's very moistening to your body but it also really helps with fertility issues um, another name for it is wild oats and there's a reason for that when they first discovered it and they were drinking it like crazy they were out so in their wild oats for sure because it really can increase libido so it can help with those type of issues as well as just really nourishing the brain and the nervous system uh, golden seal this is a herb that does have some antimicrobial properties so it's very good for you know assisting the body when you have an infection and notably stomach infections so another reason why it has a close association with cancer and then ladies mantle again another great female herb for just overall female reproductive system health holistic ways to manage these health problems as a cancer native always attend to your diet if you're noticing frequent gi distress after you eat this could be meaning that you have an allergy or an intolerance to a food so you'd want to start an elimination diet where basically you eliminate all of the main food groups which is gluten dairy you know, um, eggs, <laughs> strawberries for some people, and you basically go down to eating just very plain stuff. And then you do that for, and it's like four to six weeks, and then you start adding things back in one at a time for like a week and see how your body reacts. And um, figure out which foods are affecting you. And then you just basically remove those from your meals right and know that those are foods that just don't work as well for your body um vital force can be weaker in this sign just because it's cancer natives tend to run cold um i see this more in sun and moon cancers than in rising cancer my husband is a rising cancer like i said and dude's hot as fuck all the time i mean like he's always like running like a fever almost it feels like and he's not he's just really hot natured um so that's not as common for cancer natives i see it more the other way where they're like myself while i'm not a cancer native i have lots of water in my chart and i'm constantly frozen doesn't matter where we are i'm cold <laughs> so um eating warming foods and keeping your house temp on the slightly higher side can actually help increase that and make sure you're getting outside in the sun daily um, cancer natives need a lot of sun to counteract the fact that they are ruled by the moon and they have so much influence from the moon in their life. 
daily movement of some sort is great, especially some that involves some sort of strength training. Um, it's really important for cancer natives. They tend toward a difficult time assimilating the necessary nutrients for strong bones. So that's calcium, vitamin D, vitamin A to an extent. Um, basically the sun ruled vitamins, right? Um, and minerals. And so because of that, again, getting out in the sun can really help. But I notice a lot struggle with this because many tend to have dairy intolerances and issues with dairy in general. So that, of course, makes it really hard to uh, get some of that vitamin D and stuff. So a vitamin D supplement, a calcium supplement, or taking a calcium cell salt, it actually would be a better idea, taking vitamin D and getting out in the sun. <laughs> You need the sun. As a cancer native, you need to be in the sun every day. I'm talking early in the morning between 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Get out in the sun. Don't wear a hat. Don't wear any sunglasses. Let the sun touch your eyes. This does not mean go look at the sun. Please don't fucking do that. But definitely get out there and, you know, get that sunlight into your eyes. Get the sunlight on your skin. Get your body the sun that it needs. And that will help your body also synthesize its own vitamin D as well and give you the ability to uh, do so. Um, strength training is also good because of the many cancer natives, because of their difficulty assimilating vitamin D and calcium, tend toward broken bones a lot in childhood especially, but also as adults, they tend to be the ones who trip and the next thing you know, they have a broken ankle or something. So strength training can actually really help with that too, as it also helps not only build your muscles, but strengthen your bones. Um, always attend to your mental health. As I said, this sign is very intuitive, empathetic, um, and you feel all the things. So staying away from the news, staying away from disturbing images, not watching movies and stuff that really do upset you. Um, other things that you notice that just highly affect your emotions, your mental health, distress you in any way, cut it out. Just cut it out of your life. This includes people too. Like if you notice certain people are really distract, making your, your mental health like go off the charts, out they go. I don't care who they are. They need to go because your health and your ability to feel well is usually more important than keeping those toxic people in your lives. Uh, music and videos that make you feel good are really imperative almost daily. Um, a rich music and art filled life that makes you happy is really great for cancer natives. Like I said, cancer likes to hold on to water. So while it's important to stay hydrated, you can actually overhydrate a cancer native easily, which in turn means that you're going to get some edema. So swelling in the hands, arms, feet, legs, you really want to watch for it. And this can be a lot of times too because uh, you're not getting enough salt in your diet and um, again that can be because of food allergies and things so making sure that you're getting electrolytes daily will really help as well with that and that'll help your body pull the fluid back from the interstitial spaces into the bloodstream to be filtered out by the kidneys and make sure that you're not only hydrated but that you're not dealing with that edema and if you notice that that's still a problem and you do feel that you're hydrated then nettle tea daily is absolutely fantastic for this um, like I said, above all else, time in nature away from too much stimulation is like an absolute must. Um, you're highly sensitive. Many have sensory issues and time alone to reset in nature is not a want, but it is an actual deep, deep seated need for this sign. You need to get out and reconnect to Mother Earth. Ground yourself to the earth, walk barefooted, lay in the grass, touch a tree, hug a tree, get out into nature. And I mean, 30 to minutes to an hour daily. You need that time to reset your soul, your spirit, your emotions, and just kind of get back to who you are instead of what you've picked up throughout that day. And pay attention to the moon as well, because you're ruled by the moon, right? Cancer natives are very susceptible to the phases of the moon. So keep a moon journal and track how the phases of the moon and what sign it's in currently affect you. So you can kind of be prepared as the phases come around and know what to expect for you. So you can adjust your body's needs accordingly. Like when it's closer to a full moon, you may actually need less water than you do when they are a new moon right when closer to our new moon so because the full moon affects the waters in the body as well as the bodies of water on the earth so 
if you've noticed that about yourself, there you go. So keep a moon journal, notice what phase it's in, what sign it's in, and how that is affecting you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And start tracking this if you're a female or an individual with ovaries who has a site, has a period. Um, track your period by the moon cycles as well. And the moon phases, especially if you're a Cancer native, will really help you figure out what's going on with your body and what it needs at that time. And if you want to talk more about that, then hit me up because that's my thing. <laughs> totally my thing hormones and the moon and the sun and all that fun stuff so overall cancer is like an amazingly wonderful sign that helps bring love light and empathy into this world which is something that is sorely needed and due to that though you too tend to sometimes lose yourself so remember to lean into your polar sign capricorn to set boundaries with others tend to your physical mental emotional and spiritual health and you will find the balance that you so desire in this world i really hope that you enjoyed this i loved talking about this because i have so many cancer natives in my life like i said and they're just all such amazing people and so i was really excited to do this one today if you want to know more about what your signs are and how those are affecting your health get a reading today there'll be a link in the show notes for that um, if you're interested in chatting and getting to know other people that are interested in the same stuff and just having more access to me join my discord group the astro connection community that link is also in the show notes and i would love to have you there and come find me on instagram under twin raven naturals the name of my apothecary i will talk to you guys later i hope you have a fabulous day love and light That's it for another great episode of The Herbal Iyer. Tune in next week for more valuable content with your host, Iyer Atla.